Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Our next speaker comes from Microsoft, who have a lot of engineers at their stand, so feel free to visit them. Uh, Lubitsa will talk about Synapse serverless SQL pools, so give her a warm welcome, and I'll give the mic to her. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ljubica, and I'm working as a product manager in Synapse SQL team in Microsoft Development Center in Serbia, right here in Belgrade. Our uh, MDCS started in 2005, and now we have a little bit more than 700 engineers and uh, other team members. Uh, we have more than uh, seven teams in the MDCS, and we are working a lot on, on a lot of exciting projects. And today I'm very happy that I'm here with you and that I can actually share uh, the products that we have been working on and the, actually the product that has been developed here in Belgrade, uh, which is serverless SQL. And it is part of the platform for analytics, which is called Azure Synapse Analytics. So let's start. Um, we often hear that the data is the new oil. And while I agree with this phrase because it highlights the importance of the data and the value that we can get, I think this quote is actually true in one more dimension. It is very hard to extract that oil, to transport that oil, and to get that oil to the end user. You need technology, you need people, you need machinery. And this is also very true for the data. Although we all know that you know, we have a lot of raw data everywhere, we are also pretty aware that it is hard to take this raw data and to transfer it to competitive advantage, to transfer it to business insights, to transfer it to data-driven decision. This is very hard and it is definitely true as, as for oil. I also disagree with this statement in another dimension uh, because as we go forward, we have less and less soil. And probably the systems that we built a couple years ago will be good going forward. So we will probably be able to use this kind of system for extracting the oil going forward. However, data is going in the opposite direction. Data is growing with insane velocity. And systems that we have built a couple years ago, they can't actually take this velocity. We need new technology. We need something that will scale as the data scales. So when having in mind that, we need to make decisions and choose technologies where actually will scale and that will work with also the data that comes tomorrow and 10 years afterwards. And to tell you a personal story so you can get the you know, feeling of the pain of this extraction if you are not from the data world or if you haven't, work, haven't been working with uh, analytics, I will tell you a personal story. So I was working previously before I started working as a product manager as a data scientist. So I was working with the data, you know, and my job was to you know, somehow transfer this data to some business and competitive advantage. And usually my manager or some of, of the business owners comes to me and says, hey, Lubica, can you predict XYZ? And I'm like, yeah, I can do it very ambitiously. And usually what I do, I start by asking, okay, where is the data? What should I predict? How to work with that? And I usually start with relational database. This is almost the first shop where you, where you go if you want to work with the data. And this is very nice because it's neat, it's structured, you have these columns, you can see what are the types. Someone who even actually had the good documentation can even tell you what these columns means. So you're not really investing a lot of time in this part of exploration. However, most of the times you actually don't find all the answers in these relational databases. Why? Because they're limited. You can ingest only some portion of your data into relational database. And most of the times, as, as with my case, I was unable to answer all the questions with just going to this shop. So I, you know, knock to other departments, ask them, you know, do you have any more data so I can use for my machine learning algorithms? And they are like, yeah, we, we have, but you know, this data is not in structure. Uh, it's not structured anymore. It is in most, most of the times in some uh, non-relational database, NoSQL database, so you need to you know, know some Python, you know, know some Spark, you need to write some code, and then uh, invest and uh, analyze that. And even that, 
is not enough. Sometimes you need to go straight to the storage because you, you can't offer yourself the time that you have delay. You need to analyze the data which is available instantly and you need to go to the storage. And when I started working as a program manager, I actually realized that most of our customers actually suffer the same pain that I suffered as a data scientist in the previous company. And um, most of our customers actually have the data everywhere. So the question is, where is the data? Data is everywhere. It is in relational database, it is NoSQL, storage, et cetera. And what customers do with that, they took they take this data and they, you know, to some extent, transform it and then put it on the storage. From the storage, they hire data engineer, bunch of data engineer guys to help us and, you know, to create these relational databases and they ingest into data warehouse, some data warehouse, so I or business users can actually use this kind of data. And uh, during this story, you can notice that there are a lot of persons, a lot of technical skilled persons involved in this process of, you know, making raw data useful. So you probably need data engineer, you probably need data scientist, and with all this time and effort that you're gonna invest, you actually can end up with data that has delay. Because all these processes of extracting data and putting it into data warehouse take time, you know. You can't actually know at the end, are you analyzing the top data if this is critical to your business application or you're analyzing the data with two hours of delay? So the problem is real and, you know, we need some products that in order to solve them. And <laughs> as, as um, I was talking, I'm very proud to, to say that the uh, team here in Belgrade actually built this kind of technologies and this technology is called serverless SQL. It is um, it, it is uh, positioned under Azure Synapse Analytics, which is an enterprise analytics platform. So in Synapse Analytics, you have various engines that can process your data and that can actually go directly to the storage. You have Spark engines, you have this pipeline so you can schedule your scripts. But what is very fancy, you have serverless SQL. Serverless SQL is a data processing system which is built to analyze a huge amount of data. And uh, the big advantage of a serverless is it can access external data, this data which is on your storage. It can access also non-relational data, I will talk about it, about NoSQL database, and it can access the storage. And the another advantage is it can access it directly without need to build any ETL pipelines and without need to manage anything. So as you start and you write your query, the serverless will be up, will be provisioned for you with your Synapse workspace, and you will actually be built only for what you do. So only for the queries that you actually execute, you will be built. I think that the business model and the idea is a quite visionary, and I will show you in the demos, actually, how you can do all these things in three or four clicks. I think that I, I the four click is the most uh, clicks that I actually uh, have in the, in the following demos. And uh, why is this important? So we want to reduce um, this burden of, you know, having boring technical tasks and we want to make space for users to be creative, for users to actually go and under, you know, spend time to understand their business, not to build their pipelines. This is what we want to do for our users. So I'm starting with this, what is with, with no, a non-relational database, which is Cosmos DB. This is a Azure, this is a Microsoft product as well. And it is example of how serverless SQL can access actually non-relational databases. To understand this, to understand the challenge, I will just briefly spend some time in explaining uh, differences between OLTP and OLAP systems. OLTP stands for Online Transactional Processing, and these systems are built for uh, uh, fast inserts, fast deletes, so they're built to give you a reliable and fast response to your requests. OIL AP systems are, stands for online analytical processing and they're built for analytics. They're built for, you know, selecting subset of columns, doing some statistics over the columns, probably doing some joins. And these two systems are inherently very different and this is why they're usually built in the difference, they're built separately. 
And what we provide with this Synapse link for Cosmos DB is actually capability which we called HTAP, Hybrid Transactional Analytical Processing. And this is taking best of the both worlds. So you can uh, write your analytical queries, you know, and execute them with the serverless SQL, but without any performance, uh, performance burden on your transactional workloads. Your transactional workloads, your fast trickle inserts will be, you know, good and so far, but you will be able to execute this analytical processing. And how we do that? Well, basically this link keeps transactional store and analytical store in order sync. The, the first one is optimized for transactional workload and the second one is optimized for analytical workload. And the only thing that you need to do is to enable Cosmos DB account to use Azure Synapse link and to enable analytical store for Cosmos DB. And connecting from the Synapse workspace to the Cosmos DB is done in three clicks. And now we will start. Uh, we, I will show you basically how you connect in the following demo. And before that, I will walk you through the Synapse workspace so you can understand which flavors workspace actually offers. So as you can see, this is my workspace, test workspace LJV. And on the one on the left tab, you have several uh, tabs. The one is data tab, and that one is quite important. In the data tab, you have all storages that are connected with your uh, workspace. And currently, we don't have Cosmos DB because this is not connected to our workspace. However, if we go forward, uh, on the workspace side, you have all these databases that are built currently in your workspace. In this demo, we will also build another database. Um, other tabs involve this develop part where you have these scripts which you can use to manipulate the data, so SQL scripts, you have notebooks, and you have also data flows. In the integrate tab, you have pipelines, and this is actually uh, the artifact that you use for orchestrating your jobs. You can schedule your scripts, you can um, schedule your uh, uh, Spark jobs. In the integrate and the monitor tab, you can uh, basically monitor your SQL requests or manage your workspace. And now the, the time when we connect to the Cosmos DB, this is the first click. We select connecting to the external data. We can take various uh, for various external storages. However, in this demo, we connect to Azure Cosmos DB. And once we do that, we need to fill in some credentials and we need to fill in some, uh, you know, uh, names and to identifiers for our Cosmos DB. However, when we do that, in the fourth click, we will uh, validate our connection to make sure that we got all these things correct. And once we do that, um, once we connect to a proper database, we will be able to execute the query. And I will show you that now after the create is done. Cosmos DB will be shown in the linked part of my workspace. As you can see, after refresh, Cosmos DB in just three clicks is connected to my workspace. Remember, in previous example, I needed to go to data engineers, I needed to write some Spark code, I needed to, you know, do all this thing in order to connect uh, with the Cosmos DB. And now the connection itself is not enough. So besides just having this connected, which is super and awesome, we need actually to, you know, execute these queries. We need to go to this data and actually see what is it. Is it, you know, retail data? Is it some sales data? And how we can answer some business questions with that. And this is also done very easy and very intuitive. So now we have our workspace and we have our Cosmos DB linked. And you can see that we have products, retail sales and store demographics. Uh, tables. Let's say that we work in this sales sector and that we got some questions about, you know, what is the sale, what are the stores that are selling the most, etc. And we want to actually answer these kind of questions. So in just one click, I uh, have the capability to auto-generate the code and explore 
first table that I'm interested in. And although this is a very, you know, select top 10 query, and you can write it if you're a SQL user, et cetera, you can write it, it's, it's not a problem. I think that this offers a very nice capability because now we can open the window uh, for all of these people who are maybe not tech savvy, who maybe don't know, query, don't know fully SQL, we can auto-generate code for them and we can enable them also to be productive and to have this, uh, to use this technology for the future business. So now, as I can, as I can see, we know that, you know, we are working, let's say, in a retail business and we are exploring our table, which is called, uh, what is called retail sales. We know that we have some product code advertising. We have a bunch of columns that we totally don't understand. And this is super fine. We have some quantities, IDs. And now when we um, kind of like felt where is our data and what is, you know, useful for that, I think it's quite important to understand one more thing, uh, to add basically what we call logical data warehouse on top of that. Uh, what is logical data warehouse? So this is a concept of adding another structure on top of your storage. And why this is important? Because this will give you a feel that you are working with this, you know, nice, neat structure database like you have in a relational world. But actually, you are only accessing your external storage still. And you have the ability to analyze this, you know, fresh and new data on your external storage. But you have the feel that your data is structured because you created this logical data warehouse on top of that. Uh, this is a quite important concept because it can help you to scale your work. Let's say, for example, I'm the analyst. I was working on, you know, analyzing the tables and I discovered that I need some tables. I need to transform a little bit. I need to throw out some columns. These are like necessary details. And when I realize that I create, you know, this structure on top of that. And this structure is a logical data warehouse. And next time when someone wants to work, he or she can work on top of my work. They don't need to go down there to do, you know, storage and analyze everything again. They can go and click and see, hmm, this is a table. It seems like a regular table. It may be external table, but it seems like a super regular table. And I know how to do that. I know how to, you know, work and pr probably write, write SQL queries. So this is a very, very important concept. And this concept enables you to actually put your data into uh, hands of a business users super easily because it works just as any other relational database. For example, Power BI works perfectly with that, which we will see because we have also that kind of demo. So let's start with creating logical data warehouse. Um, so in Logical Data Warehouse, we want to create our new SQL database. And let's say we call this database retail uh, store. Uh, we can do that with a code, but I'm constantly cho choosing this, uh, you know, no code or low code manner. And this retail store, you can notice that this doesn't have any external tables nor views as some regular would be. And with a very simple script, I can create uh, this layer of a structure and I can create few views. And this is what this script is going to do. And now when I execute this script, I will actually uh, be able to continue and to work with my tables. So remember that we had this product part and that we work in the retail business. And now we created a structure on top of our uh, storage. And we know that we have a few tables. And for example, um, our manager asked us, okay, what is the, you know, the most pricey product and what is the store that sells the most quantity? We want, for example, to optimize our business and we want to remove all these stores that are not functioning as well. And we want to actually maybe, uh, you know, remove some product from our product line because we want to be focused only on some of two. This is our strategy. Um, you can write the queries as I was writing in previously. However, business users don't really like this tabular view. You know, 
it is quite boring. They, you know, need to go through all of these uh, rows and columns. So what is very useful is to put all this data into charts. Charts and images are telling, you know, more concise and more and better picture when it comes to, you know, making the business decisions. And we have another product under Microsoft umbrella, the Power BI, which is top leader in this analytics space. And I will actually be using Power BI to put all these data from the storage into Power BI into hands of business users. So. I, was, I wrote some query where I actually aggregated the data and I will put that. As you can see now, I connect to my uh, serverless SQL pool and this is uh, specified as just regular server name. I copy paste the code which, where I aggregated things that I want. I paste it in the uh, Power BI editor and when I uh, put, when I basically, you know, uh, put my credentials on, I can see that this data is imported into Power BI. What is very fancy is that serverless SQL is actually executing these kind of queries. So this query is just evaluating and running. In the monitor tab in the serverless SQL pool, you would see that this query is executed and that this query actually processes some data. Uh, this loading can take some time, but being that we are <laughs> analyzing very few of data, it is just, it, it is, actually finished very fast. And now we have this data, this summarized data as, as we want. However, we want to put this um, into, a need, into, into a business user. We plot product code and we plot average price. And we are doing everything with clicks. This is super useful. You don't need any you know, fancy technical skills to finish something like this. Uh, so now we see, for example, that a service laptop has the, you know, the highest price and that a uh, store uh, 11, 11, uh, 111 is the store that is selling the most. But maybe the question is, okay, I'm interested which store is selling particular product because now I want to remove this product and I want to understand how this will impact other stores. No problem. Let's add another filter. By adding another filter in just two clicks, <laughs> uh, this you can filter for a product code and you can actually see that, for example, for this particular product, which stores are selling it and how they function. So that was about the demo where we saw actually how we work with three scenarios. The first scenario is exploring the data. It is super easy. You do a few clicks, you auto-generate the code, and you see, you actually get in the state where you don't know anything about data to the state where you actually see the data in four clicks. The second scenario is once we understand it, we add additional structure so we can scale our work to other people and we can, you know, make easier our work for, other, for, for ourselves when we come and work again. This is logical data warehouse. And the second scenario is analytics and business insights in just few clicks with you know simple sql logic we can answer some business question and we can answer it not just now this uh, power bi report can actually be published and can actually be refreshed each day so next time when your business owner asks you for some question you don't need to do anything you just need to click refresh power bi report and the newest data will be you know, taken from the storage and will be put on these charts. However, in order to be very, you know, not straightforward, let's even more complicate this scenario. Your business owner is asking you now, but I know price, but I don't care about the price. I care about the revenue. You know, what is the revenue of this product? Am I, you know, getting money or losing money? And but you know with that question we soon realize that we need the cost of the product you know, however, cost of the product is not in Cosmos DB, and although this is a very simple demo, this is what really happens in reality. Let's think a little bit. Sales data are usually some systems which are totally separate from the manufacturing, and manufacturing is where you actually can estimate some cost. So your manufacturer puts. For example, cost of the product in ADLS Gen 2. And now, because you're connected to Cosmos DB, you're like, I don't have that kind of data. 
but this is not a problem with serverless. As mentioned before, serverless can connect easily to the ADLS Gen 2, and this is what we're going to do now. We will connect to the ADLS Gen 2, and we will actually do join between source, which is no SQL, non-relational, and between source, which is on external tables. So totally different sources, we're going to join them, and we're going to make the value out of them. So let's start. Um, I will not go to exact connection, but to exact connection, connection steps. But as you can see, connecting to the Synapse workspace to ADLS Gen 2 is very similar. It has very similar feel as connecting with a Cosmos DB. It is also three clicks. Um, and once you do that, you actually have ADLS Gen 2. And now let's see how we make the most of ADLS Gen 2. So now you see that in my storage, I actually have uh, two folders, which is data and the workspace. And for example, I was talking with you know people, they told me that uh, the table that I'm uh, interested in is in the data folder. I, again, use this capability, select top 10, uh, Synapse workspace renders code for me, and I execute this query without any burden, and I can see, luckily, that in this table, I have wholesale cost, I have product ID, and I have all things that I need to answer this business question and to you know, finish my working day for today. Uh, so let's start. I will now uh, show you the code, which is actually joining two things. If you see in the Cosmos DB retail sales, you have the table that we created. However, this ADLS product this is actually a table. This, this is actually the data from the storage. And we connect them exactly in this query and do the join. And once we do the join, we can uh, create basically you know, this calculation, what is the price and what is the cost of the product. And once this query finishes, we see and we validate that our results are totally okay. We are definitely good with that. And we want now to put this into Power BI. There is no need to create a new Power BI. We can edit existing query. And this existing query will again execute um, you know, queries to, with the a serverless SQL. And uh, it will load the data. And this is happening right now. So if I just copy paste the code, I will execute this query with a serverless SQL from Power BI as a connector. And you will see that now uh, we will get the new data which is inserted in the, our Power BI desktop. However, we kind of forgot something. You know, we forgot that actually what we calculated is not you know, the revenue. We just put the wholesale, uh, wholesale cost as a column. But this is not a problem. You can Ha you have this functionality actually in Power BI, and in case you forgot a certain amount of things, or you know, in case you forgot some columns, you can add these columns. Power BI has a very fancy capabilities of you know adding new columns within the desktop and uh, adding new measurement like uh, percentage growth, month over month, and all other metrics that business users really care about. So. When I realize that I don't have the column that my business owner asked me, I will create a new column super easily. And then I will actually uh, create plots for uh, my revenue. And as you can see, uh, you have also auto, uh, auto, uh, auto complete. So you don't need to know everything. You can you know, get the feeling what you really want. And I think that uh, the beauty of the Power BI is that it will actually guide you. So now uh, I am ready to finally plot this final ask and to see what is the most, uh, what is the product that actually will give me uh, the most revenue. And what we see here is that this service laptop is definitely negative. So this is the thing that we want to remove. And it is quite surprising because Surface Laptop was the ones that had, it is not surprising because Surface Laptop was actually uh, the most priciest one. And uh, another fancy thing which you can use with the Power BI, uh, you can add in a tooltip details, for example, for each store how uh, profitable was without you know, putting a burden on your charts. 
uh, and all of this you can pack and you can you know publish and give it to your business users so they can make a proper decision and optimize their business with that being said i would like to you know thank you and to finish with this summary uh, we seen a lot of details here and we i mean I uh, intentionally gave you a lot of information. We were talking about, you know, Synapse Analytics. We were talking about serverless SQL, about oil TP processing, about uh, oil AB processing. So a lot of information has been there. And I hope that some of this information will inspire you to actually dig further and, you know, explore and um, understand a little bit more about these things. But I would like to to you, you to take uh, to go home with these three final thoughts. So Cosmos DB, non-relational base, and ADLS Gen 2 storage can be easily accessed with a serverless SQL pool. With a serverless SQL pool, we can add structure on top of unstructured data. So we can create a logical data warehouse both on top of Cosmos DB, ADLS Gen 2, and query these data and views with the most recent data. We are not in the risk of having data which is delayed or having data which is, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, which information is somehow uh, shrinked. And the last but not the least, Power BI is a very powerful tool and Power BI reports can be created on top of Cosmos DB and ADLS Gen 2 with serverless SQL pool and all of these things. So one, two, three is done in most of the four clicks. Thank you.